Well, I wasn't expecting too much from this episode since it's based off the fewest amount of pages from the books. And while I didn't like everything they added, I still liked what it did for the characters, and it was a reasonable enough way to fill the space of an episode. Anyways, you know the drill at this point. So let's get to it. The episode starts off with Percy's dream of book readers know who talking to the lightning thief with great expectations and threatening to replace them if they don't do well enough. And we don't see either of their faces, fittingly enough. He wakes up, and we see that Half-Bloods can apparently bring prisms with them to use Iris messages with. Nice touch. That is something that makes perfect sense in this world. They try Chiron, but they end up getting Luke, who updates them on the situation, saying Shiz is getting real, and now the cabins are taking sides. And apparently Percy and company think that Clarice is the thief. But this doesn't influence the episode that much. Annabeth immediately cuts off the message as soon as Percy almost brings up Hermes, because, true to his book counterpart, Luke really hates his dad. Alright, shortly thereafter, Grover shows us that he's apparently talked to all the animals, and he's apparently going to help them escape. Which they do as soon as the truck stops. They go to the Lotus Hotel, acknowledge that it's a trap, because they've all read the Odyssey apparently, though Percy's only read the graphic novel version, and they still think that it's the flowers that pull you into the trap. Grover splits off from the other two, and he's quickly taken as he meets a fellow satyr who claims that Pan is there. So the Lotus tempts the victim according to what their desires are, in addition to wiping their memory. Interesting choice there. Cutting back to Percy and Annabeth, she fills Percy in on Luke's backstory, and Percy tells her about the dreams he's been having as a way of foreshadowing. And we get some more details about mortals who can see through the mist, occasionally seeing things. Foreshadowing Rachel, it seems. The duo meets with Hermes, who avoids talking about helping them until Luke is brought up, and then he pulls them aside. Hermes apparently comes here because he's depressed due to having to leave his children alone so much. He says that parenting is difficult and he was told to stay away from Luke because being present in his life would only make things worse. And oddly enough, it was by Poseidon. This is a change I'm a little split on because in the book it was supposed to be because Hermes knew that Luke's fate could not be changed which was supposed to be an emphasis on the tragedy he was fated to go through. So we find out that Annabeth stole Hermes' car keys and she plans to use his car to get where they need to go. I would call this a contradiction since the invisibility cap isn't supposed to fool the gods, but it's revealed later that Hermes knew the whole time. Annabeth's fatal flaw is hubris, so I guess it makes sense that she'd be arrogant enough to try something like this. You can't steal from the god of stealing things. So they find Grover playing a game, similar to in the book, and they have to pull him out of it. They take the car, and Percy is a pretty bad driver. They do manage to get out of the hotel, and they get where they need to go, and Percy decides it's finally time to go talk to his dad. Presumably because of what Hermes told him. Poseidon doesn't show up, but a nymph does, and she tells him it's too late. They spent too long in the Lotus Hotel, since it distorts your perception of time. Percy says that he's going to continue on the quest anyways, and the nymph gives him the pearls. And there's four of them in this version, because the nymph knows he wants to save his mom still. We get the preview for the next episode. We see what looks like the record store, the underworld, which apparently is a big desert for a lot of it, Cerberus, Girl with the Flying Shoes, and oddly enough, the Ares fight. Though I guess they could end episode 7 with the Ares fight, and there'd still be enough material for a final episode. Final thoughts. I wasn't expecting much for this episode, but it wasn't half bad. They brought in some more things from later books and changed the order of some things, but it's still enjoyable while getting across most of the points from the book. I'm guessing these last two episodes are going to be faithful to their book chapters, just as the first two were, as they are a bit more dense in terms of story beats that need to be hit on. I am Kieran Mythos, and I'll see you all next time!